What's up everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I'll show you how to bake Jeanne d'Arc from the Fade series. Jeanne d'Arc is a character from the Fade series, she doesn't have a master and she's not a servant, and she's the one who oversees the grill war but can't exactly interfere. But of course it's anime, so she bursts out some OP stuff and ends up murking everyone anyways. She's based on the historical figure Joan of Arc, the chosen warrior of God to fight for France, so naturally her noble phantasms are French. La Pucelle, which is a massive fireburst, is one of her main attacks. And then we have Luminosité Eternelle, which is a burst of holy light. I know you can see where this is going. This build is going to be based on those, as well as her flag polearm, which, as you can see, is going to be the commander's standard. It is a halberd that has a spear moveset, so it has a thrusting moveset. Its two-handed charge R2 is extremely good, and of course the R1, especially two-handed, it is great to stagger enemies and stunlock them. Not to mention its guard counter is extremely good, so don't forget to use it. As I mentioned, we'll be using a giant flame incantation for some big damage against bosses who are resistant to holy damage. Wrath of Gold is going to be our get the heal off of me move for mobs. It can also be really effective against some bosses. As I noticed against some of the golems, uh, it's pretty good. Next we're going to use Elden Stars, it's more for show than anything as it doesn't exactly track, but it has a good AoE explosion for mob situations, and you also get that continuous damage during its animation, so if you set it up right, aka if you're mad lucky, you can even Wrath of Gold enemies push them back into uh, Elden Stars explosion. But that's mostly wishful thinking on my part, honestly. I just wanted to make the combo sound more cool than it really is. For the seal, uh, we'll be using the Urtree seal instead of the Giant's seal because it has a base holy damage, but both have the same incant scaling maxed out at 55 strength and 55 faith. So it really depends if you wish to boost fire damage or holy damage. Now the commander standard, Ash of War, gives you a damage buff just 20% more damage, but it doesn't stack with other damage buffs. So you won't waste FP on Golden Vow or Flame grant me strength, but if you want to use a heal, uh, we can use Urtree's Boon, which is pretty decent. So again, this build is versatile, and what you can kill with holy damage, you definitely can with fire, which remains canon to the character, and that always makes me happy when making a character-themed build. Looking at the stats here at level 150, if you use a class like Confessor or even Vagabond, which is going to be really good, you want something like this. 40 Vigor, 30 Mind, 20 Endurance, 55 Strength, because the Commander's standard scales B with Strength and you can't change the affinity, sadly. And 14 Dex to be able to use it, and 60 Faith. Now the soft caps for both Strength and Faith are 55, but Faith is at 60 because of a Talisman. At that level, I don't suggest putting more points than 55 in your two main damage stats. And you'll notice this build is a bit thirsty on the FP front, so make sure you have plenty of that blue raspberry juice on you. Overall, it's a pretty solid build since you can rely on two damage types, so I really hope you enjoy this, and I'll show you where to get everything you need to make it. For the armor, you have a few choices. Obviously, the uh, commoner's headband altered uh, is gonna work really well here. Uh, the blue silver male armor I like a lot. You could also use the confessor set. And I love the look from behind, but I really don't like the front. <laughs> like, it really bothers me, so uh, I prefer the blue silver male armor instead. We'll be using the commander's standard halberd. So, to get this, you need to go to Caled and fight Commander O'Neill in the heart of Aeonia. So, to get the Erd Tree seal, you want to come to Prison Town Church in the Volcano Manor. And you can follow me from this point. And this is where you'll be able to loot the seal from. For Elden Stars, you want to make your way to the Deep Root Depth, uh, which you can get there if you follow Fia's and Ronnie's questline. You need to defeat the Twin Gargoyles. Once you get to Great Waterfall Crest, I'll show you where to go from here.
Once you make your way out of the cave, you can loot it on this body right here. For a giant's flame take D, you want to purchase this from Brother Corin or the uh, Turtle Pope at uh, the Church of the Vows, but you'll need to bring them the giant's prayer book first. And you'll be able to find this prayer book in the Guardian's garrison right here. And you can take this White Ridge Road aside of Grace to get there. And the heal is optional, but if you want it, you can buy this from uh, the Turtle Pope at the Church of the Vows. And you don't need a special prayer book for it. To get a Wrath of Gold, you want to come to the Altus Plateau. Right here to the uh, Wood Folk Runes. It's going to be in a chest in this area right here. Talismans will look like this. America's Sword Seal, a Fire Scorpion Charm, a Sacred Scorpion Charm, and Radagon Icon. Uh, you can definitely put something to help you with the FP consumption of the spells. Uh, you could also use Flock Canvas's Talisman. Uh, you could use the Cerulean Amber Medallion or a Godfrey Icon as well. All those are great choices. But I'll show you the ones that I specifically use. So for Radagon Icon, you want to come to the Parlor side of Grace after you defeat Red Wolf Radagon uh, in the Academy. And just follow me. It's pretty easy. All we need to do is go right as we get out of this door. and you'll be able to loot the talisman from the chest right there. For the sacred scorpion charm, with, which helps uh, with holy damage, it's an NPC you need to fight in Kaled, and you'll get invaded as soon as you get there. So you can make your way uh, from the summoner village, and you want to make your way to the smoldering church. Uh, once you defeat her, you'll get the talisman. For the fire scorpion charm, you want to go to the volcano manor area. Um, However, you want to go underneath, so you want to take either the Seedwater River side of Grace or the Seedwater Terminus side of Grace, depending on which one you have. And you want to make your way to Fort Laid. And you'll want to make your way to the very top of the fort. Uh, once you get there, you want to go left on the ledge and you'll be able to get the talisman from there. Now for America's Source Seal, the last talisman, you want to come to the prayer room in the Halic Tree area. And you want to follow along. Now this part is kind of a pain because at the bottom there's like three revenants, I think. You can sneak past one of them, but they're just really annoying. and you'll be able to loot it right here. Now, even if you use the path that I chose, uh, there's still gonna be one revenant that's gonna spawn anyways. So uh, yeah, have fun with that. For the wondrous physic, uh, you wanna do the holy shrouding crack tier and the cerulean hidden tier, which will help you in boss fights. You'll do more damage and you won't consume any FP. Now, someone asked me to show the sliders. Um, they asked me on my saber video and I don't think I did an amazing job with this one compared to saber, but you know, all the girls in Fade kind of have the same face anyways, you know, all that changes is really the hair and the eyes. So anyways, I'll still go through it for the people who want it.
So you should now have everything to make this build. I really hope you like this one. If you want more builds like this, there are plenty more on my channel. So have yourself a wonderful day, everyone, and I'll see you all very soon.